hello guys you welcome to another tutorial on my channel abigail here in today's video i'll be sharing how to sew this bustier blouse with off shoulder drape my last video was on how to draft the pattern this video is well detailed and easy to follow if this is what you like to see then keep watching let's get into the video like i said earlier my last tutorial was on how to draft this pattern if you would like to see the video, the link is in the comments, go ahead and see it so you have a proper understanding of how we got here. So after drafting the pattern, I transferred it to my fabric and this was how I cut it out. This is the side front, I cut out two of the pattern and I added stitching allowance to join the bustier, the upper part. I didn't add anything to the side because I added it while drafting the pattern and I added half inch also to the hem. The center front, I did the same thing, half inch stitching allowance and I cut it out on fold and I did the same thing to the lining. For the center back, I cut out two of the pattern and I cut out the lining the same way. I also added half inch stitching allowance to all the side. The side back, I did the same thing, two of the pattern as well as the lining, half inch stitching allowance except for this side. I added the stitching allowance while drafting my pattern. I also ironed interfacing to the main fabric as well as the lining. Now I set the back piece aside in order to work on the front piece and the first thing I'll do is to separate the lining and then notch the underbust area. The next thing to do is to cut out wording to part the bustier and I'll be using the pattern paper to achieve that. On the side front, I'll measure 4.5 inches, leaving out half inch like so. This is because this is a pattern paper and we already added stitching allowance to our fabric. So I measured 4.5 inches and from the underbust line, I'll trace out the shape I want the wording to have. Now for the center front, I'll just cut through the underbust line. I will go ahead now to cut out the wording, adding half inch allowance to the center front the same way I'll be adding to the side front. The next thing to do is to place it on my fabric. The shiny part will face down, that is the part that will be ironed to the fabric. I'll go ahead now to iron it. After ironing, the next thing to do is to join the bustier. I'll place the side front on the center front like so, making sure the notch part of the underbust area aligns and I will be stitching this way. I'll do the same thing to the second part and also stitch the lining the same way. Now for the back, I'll be joining the pieces together. I indicated the upper part of the two sides so I won't be confused while stitching. Go ahead and do the same thing so you won't lace any of the piece to the wrong side, okay? Now I'll arrange the piece to where it belongs and the part where I'll be stitching is the dart area. See the way I placed it on each other right side facing. I'll be stitching with half an inch and also stitch the lining the same way. Alright guys, after stitching the front pieces together, this is what I have. I went ahead to open each seam and ironed it flat and this is what it looks like. I did the same thing to the lining and also ironed it. Now for the back panel, this is what I have after stitching and I also stitched the lining the next thing to do is to shape the m while drafting i mentioned i was still going to alter the shape of the m now this is the front piece and it is on fold i went up by two inches at this side at this point the m of your blouse can assume any shape you want not necessarily the one at thumbnail so i'll place this on the lining as well as the back main fabric and the lining and cut it out the same way. So guys, this is what the aim of the back panel looks like after reshaping it. The next thing to do now is to mark where boning will be attached. Now this is the lining of the front piece. My boning will be stitched on the lining and the boning won't reach the bust area. 
here i'm trying to mark where i want the boning to start from around the under bust area now you can either create bone casing or stitch your boning directly on your lining i'll be stitching mine directly on my lining and those places i marked are where each boning will be placed although i might end up adding more bones now when stitching your boning it shouldn't reach the hem of your lining like half inch before the hem will be fine and that is how i'll stitch the boning all through now for the lining of the back piece i'll be stitching boning there as well one will be stitched directly on the that seam like so you can see how i placed it half inch from the top and it will stop half inch before the hem now after stitching on the that seam i'll come here and leave about 0.2 inches which i will use to join the lining and the main piece together and from that mark i'll place a bone in there all the way to half inch before the hem and from that boning, I'll leave half inch for the eyelet. That's where I'll place the eyelet. And after that half inch, I'll place another boning there, making it three boning as the back area. Here, I have stitched the boning to the lining of the front piece. And this is what it looks like at the wrong side. What I did to the edges was tape it before stitching so that it won't poke through my fabric. Go ahead and do the same thing and I ended up adding more boning. Now you can see that the boning was half inch before the hem. This is what the back lining looks like after stitching the boning and this is where the eyelet will be placed. The next thing to do is to use lining to turn the neckline, the side as well as the aim. But before then, I will attach strap to the neckline. These are the pieces for the strap. I cut out 2.5 inches for the width before I stitch the side and turn it right out. For the length, I doubled the 6 inches for my off shoulder plus 1 inch stitching allowance making it 13 inches. Now I will place each strap after the joining at the side front and pin it down. Afterwards, I'll place the lining on each right side facing each other and stitch the neckline with half inch measurements. I will also stitch the side as well as the hem. Okay guys, I'm done stitching the neckline. After stitching the neckline, I notched it so that the lining will lay properly and I also close the hem with half inch measurement as well as this side at this other side i didn't stitch it up completely because i'll be turning my fabric right out from here i'll do that now and this is what it looks like after turning the next thing i'm going to do is to stitch up this part i'm going to close it and top stitch on it now i'll place the back panel on the front right side facing each other then place the strap after the joining at the side back i will also do the same to the other side i'll place the strap and pin it down and this is what the strap should look like after joining after stitching the strap i will use lining to turn the neckline the side as well as the aim i'll be turning the neckline using half inch measurements I will also stitch the hem. The lining is a little shorter than the main fabric. This is because I don't want the lining to be showing outside. I will join the center back and also the side back. But I won't join that side back completely. I will leave a little space to turn the fabric right out. And I'll do the same thing to the other back panel. After using the lining to turn the neckline, the side and the hem, this is what I have. I also closed the space I used to turn the fabric right out and I did the same thing to the second panel. Another thing I did was to run a stitch on the boning lines that showed at the right side of the back panel. I run the stitch on the two sides of the half inch we left for the eyelet. I followed the stitch on this side of the boning and also this side of the boning to create casing for the eyelet. The next thing to do now is to close the two sides of this blouse using my body measurements. After closing the side, this is what I have. 
and this is what the back is looking like i went ahead to open the seam and iron it and i also notch the waist area it was not laying well i had to notch it in case your seam allowance is showing on the outside like mine go ahead and fold it in like so fold it in and tack it down do the same to the other side and the aim the next thing to do is to form the shoulder drape so i'll set this blouse aside and bring in the nets i'll be making use of the width of this net is 34 inches and it can't be enough i need at least 45 to 50 inches and the length is 60 inches and i'll be using it like that just to illustrate how it's going to be done i will get another net later to replace this one the first thing to do now is to fold the length into two then you fold it again into four i folded this net because it is a very light fabric if i'm working with a thicker fabric i wouldn't need to fold it the next thing to do is to get the center of the net then attach it to the center of the neckline of the blouse and pin it together next step is to come to the side of your blouse at the top part and measure 1.5 inches from the joining pin your net there now you can start draping on that line that 1.5 inches line start making pleats or you can just gather the net i will pleat and pin till i exhaust the net now it's best to do this on a mannequin or on your client's body this way the drapes will fit and you won't need to make much adjustments after pleating on this side before you start pleating on the other side unpin the net from the center of the neckline and push it down to two to three inches from the neckline because at the center the net is not meant to be at the neckline now at this other side measure the 1.5 inches from the joining pin down the net there and pleat on that line just like you did on the other side Now this is the part that will go around the upper sleeve and it can be 13, 14 or 15 inches long depending on how firm you want it around your sleeve. For the finishing, tuck it in and pin it directly under the line of the strap. Alright guys, here yeah, I already replaced the net and I stitched down the part that was pinned earlier and this is what the drapes look like. At the back, I did the same thing I stitched the pinned part. I also went ahead to fix the eyelet on the eyelet space and I'll be showing us how I did it. The first thing you have to do is to mark the distance between your eyelet. I'll be using this plier to attach the eyelet and these are the eyelets I'll be making use of. The upper part of this plier will be used to punch holes. I'll go ahead now and punch the holes on the parts I mark. When you have set your puncher on the fabric, try to apply pressure on the plier. After punching the holes, I will use my scissors to cut out the fabric there. Then I will set the eyelet on the hole I punched. Now for the plier, the upper part is the puncher but the lower part will be used to attach the eyelet. Now, the long part will be on top of the eyelet, while the part with the flat surface will be under. After setting the plier on the eyelet, apply pressure on the plier. And this is what it will look like when you are done. I will go ahead now to fix the eyelet on the remaining part I marked. Now, this eyelet is the smaller one. There's another one that is quite bigger than this. And I would advise that you use that one instead of this because this small one is not strong enough to withstand the snatching pressure. It might end up pulling off. This is what you should have after fixing your eyelid. The last thing to do on this blouse is to bead on the arm and the neckline. But I don't have the luxury of time to bead. That is why I opted for these trimmings. And I'll be using the remaining at the upper part of the neckline. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you find this tutorial helpful. 
kindly give us a thumbs up and if you are yet to subscribe to this channel kindly subscribe and turn on post notifications so that anytime I post new video, you will be notified. See you in my next one.